Great. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tim Lee. I'm a research analyst at Red Cloud Securities. I'm delighted to host a Red Cloud webinar on silver exploration and production today. Uh, we will hear from Jose Garcia, uh, CEO and Director of SilverX Mining Corporation. Uh, during today's webinar, uh, he will provide an overview and outlook. Then we will take questions. You can type your questions into the chat box at any time. We will get to as many as we can. Now, before we kick things off, first, we need to discuss some fine print. Uh, during this SilverX webinar, forward-looking statements may be made. I would direct listeners to the company's forward-looking statements outlined on page two of the SilverX corporate uh, presentation. That can be found on the company's website, silverx-mining.com. For Red Cloud Securities, I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only. Uh, it should not be considered a solicitation or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not consider the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigation and seek their own professional advice before investing. Uh, please see our most recent research located on the Red Cloud website for specific disclosures on SilverX. So we have SilverX presenting today. Uh, the company is an exciting emerging uh, silver producer in Peru. Uh, the company is newly public and has hit the ground running. Uh, it's looking on growing its Nueva Recuperada mining operation, which also has tremendous exploration potential. So with that, I now turn it over to Jose and, and Don uh, to update our, our audience on the company. Thank you, Timothy. Um, thank you, Red Cloud. And thank you everyone for joining us today. We are very excited here with Donald McIver, our Senior Advisor on Exploration and Resources, to give you an update on the company and overall on the, on the geology, our exploration activities, and the good news that are going to be coming up in the next few weeks. As Timothy said, we are a very dynamic, agile, fast-growing silver producer in central Peru. I believe that many of you actually know us, but I'm going to give you a background of the company, going to tell you about our activities, and more importantly, the geology updates that are going to be happening in the next few weeks, okay? So SilverX has been now trading for about a month, obviously on the TSX Ventures, and, and we're listed, as I said, as a fast growth producer and developer we own a whole district in central Peru, historical mining that we actually are rediscovering, re-understanding and giving a new perspective. We are developing a mine, so at the back of that, we are producing or we are processing ore, but more importantly, we are now doing different exploration. We are upgrading our resources, we are extending our footprint, and obviously we are gonna have a very quick um, sort of re-rating of the company, but we started SilverX with the view of actually doing that, consolidating district, looking at historical places where new mining and more importantly, new exploration can be applied. And we are a junior that you are gonna find very few like us, which is a combination of production and also exploration. Our vision is obviously to become a mid-tier producer. We are gonna play our competitive edge in South America, gonna grow fast and we hope to be one of the silver players in the midterm. And basically what we've got in central Peru is two projects, okay? We combined two companies. We were the merger of AutoX, Canadian listed company with a high grade gold exploration project in Peru and Latitude Silver, um, which is obviously the producer and developer in Guancavelica. We have a very interesting portfolio. At the moment, we have a fully fledged mining facility with a name plate capacity of 600 tons a day, which is basically filled on a daily basis. We have a district that will allow a potential of more than two and a half thousand tons in the next few years. That's our target. Um, so remind, remember that we are gonna have a quick re-rating of the resource. We're actually gonna do all the technical studies to increase the capacity of the district by four to five times within the next few years. We have started with an inferred resource of more than 7 million tons, which is very good and everything is happening now. So we are drilling. We're gonna have very good intersects. We are gonna be seen um, on the news in the next few days, and obviously a quick resource increase. Very quickly on the team, um, we are all based in Lima, other than our CFO, basically a very competent team with years of experience in Peru. I have Donald McIver here to my left-hand side, more than 20 years doing exploration in Peru. We actually have Freddie Mayor, 
as our um, COO in the country. And obviously on top of that, we have a Canadian board that brings very competent people. Some of those are very familiar to you, like Paul Matisek, for instance. So now with that combination, we are prepared to be, as I said, a fast growth company in that combination of both capital markets and people on the ground. And just one last comment on that is basically the track record of this board, which is quite impressive. It's up to eight transactions in the last few years that were extremely value creative, okay? SilverX is nothing but one of those. The way or the why actually people like, like them put their eyes on us is because we are gonna be doing very good returns over the next few years, we hope so. But let's talk about Nueva Recuperada uh, district. And it's interesting because in growing a district over the last four years, since we, since we were private, one thing we had in mind was obviously social responsibility and environment stewardship. We believe in sustainable development. One of the reasons why Bain, a small company, bootstrapped from the beginning, one of the reasons for our success is because we've been able to work with the community in a very solid way. So basically that's the strategy going forward and we can expand that later. But in validating the, or in consolidating the district, we validated a historical resource, which as I, as I said, is pretty, is pretty big. It's more than 7 million tons of these high grade epithelial veins. That was a great starting point. It's obviously compliant. That was published more than a year ago. And now we are working on upgrading that resource very quickly. What you see on that picture is actually nothing but an intersect that we have recently. And this is our district. We are in Huancabelica. It's basically 200 kilometers from Lima, and we own more than 15,000 hectares of concessions. Um, our plant is centrally located on that map you have in the red colored concessions, and we have basically three targets. I will talk about the two main targets, what we call Tangana, which is the north of the project. It's more than 6,000 hectares of an impressive um, uh, epithelial system. We'll go about that today specifically. And then towards the south, we have Esperanza. It's another system of equal nature that will be activated in the next couple of years. So with that, you can already appreciate the concept of districts. So basically two different production and development areas with a plant that is centrally located and all the advantages that it has. If you look at the left, Basically, you see all the other companies in the neighborhood, including obviously silver and polymetallic producers, but also some of the majors that are looking for some other assets. This is all one Cabelica, remember. And just before talking about the Tangana update, just a quick reminder that we are building a mine, that we are processing that ore in a, let's say, bulk sampling period, but more importantly, the mine has been built. We're accessing more resources. We are drilling. We've committed ourselves to put more than 25,000 meters of drilling within the next 12 months. And we have a huge potential in both carbonic hosted areas and also volcanic hosted. It's the first time in the district that we are gonna be looking at this in a holistic way, basically integrating several veins under a single mine infrastructure. We are already selling our concentrates to Trafigura. Our metallurgy is very standard. We produce a silver and lead concentrate uh, and a zinc concentrate. Our veins are sub-vertical or vertical. We have a fully mechanized cut and fill operation. And obviously we have all agreements um, with the communities in place. And with that, we're gonna talk about Tangana, which is what we believe a district scale project. Perhaps this is a good time for me to hand over to Donald McIver, who is obviously gonna talk about the Tangana system. Thank you, Jose. Okay, so as Jose correctly mentions, a uh, highly prospective uh, region of Peru. Um, it's essentially polymetallic. That's the major target, silver polymetallic. Um, the structures that we know um, are long. They go over two kilometers in length. They average around about one and a half meters in width and they go down fairly deeply. We know that they go down at least 250 meters in places and still open-ended. So a lot of exploration to do. So those 25,000 meters that uh, Jose mentioned, um, we have uh, defined our budget for the, for the next 12 months. We know where we want to drill and a lot of those meters are going to go into this Tangana mining unit area. Around about 8,000 meters of that 25,000 will be drilled specifically in the Tangana mining unit. For example, this is the Tangana 1 uh, structure, mineralized structure, which showing its 
historical stoping that was conducted way back in the 70s. Um, and uh, we've put a couple of drill holes in recently from uh, the, the, um, the drives coming in on, on the side of the, of the structure. And uh, we've had some pretty decent intersections. Uh, we just about ready to put those out, um, high grade, no doubt. Um, we have the results in preparing the press release, so look out for that, it'll be coming out soon. As you can see from this section, um, the green dots underlying those historical stoped out areas are our targeted extensions, mineralized extensions, where we believe we have uh, a really good chance of um, getting some decent intersections, and we'll talk a bit more about that in our imminent press release. Kalka, this is, this is a structure which runs sub parallel to Tangana. It's about uh, 400 to 500 meters off to the northwest of Tangana. It's also a structure which runs over two kilometers, I think it's 2.3 kilometers that we actually see on surface. Um, it has some historical access and uh, as you can see, some old uh, historical resource definition there. So we'll be taking a closer look at that. Um, there's a plan view of the Kalka, the Kalka vein and also the Tangana vein. Both veins longer than two kilometers. A number of other veins around. We've already identified over 11 kilometers of highly prospective veins in this, in this uh, vein field. Um, so yeah, highly prospective as I say and a lot of targets to, to look at. What we're seeing there is some historical um, surface geochemistry we're busy reanalyzing some of that with uh, an established QAQC 43101 compliant uh, QAQC protocol in place. So we'll be able to report on some of that information in the near future. Okay, this is uh, one of our recent intersections. Uh, we're not showing you any grades there that hasn't been reported yet um, to the public, but uh, there you can see the massive to semi-massive mineralization that occurs in these intersections. The true width of these intersections runs in the order of one to one and a half meters in width. Um, and uh, we're seeing uh, plenty of stellarite, galena, chalcopyrite, etc. cetera. Um, host rock in this case is um, effectively altered volcanics. Um, and some of these veins actually run through um, calcareous limestone sediments, and these in fact are hosted in the volcanic plastic uh, package of sediments. The mineralization itself occurs as massive to semi-massive, but we also get some veins, blebs, um, and I guess stringers of mineralization, some disseminated mineralization. So yeah, it's uh, they're really well, well defined. It's obviously these, the, the formation of these structures has taken place in a a brittle environment, a brittle setting. They very continuous, um, and as Jose mentioned earlier, sub-vertical in orientation um, and continuous. So uh, yeah, highly prospective. Some of the mineralization is uh, in in brecciated. It's it's tectonic brecciation that we see in some of the structures which has been mineralized. Um, and uh, this is just an example of that. This has taken some historical drilling from the the Calco vein. Um, this is information which uh, has not been reported uh, in the in the public environment yet. Um, but there we go, Calco. And basically, just, just to emphasize that, that we are processing the ore we are producing uh, in this sort of mine building phase. By the way, the two drill intersects that you've seen over there are going to come up in the next few days. So hopefully we're going to have a pretty strong sequence of, of news reporting. We expect that to be good grades, obviously. Um, we expect Tangana actually with all that, let's say, bunch of veins all together to be a highly, let's say, a high production um, uh, vein system. We're developing a mine added, accessing the core of the system, gonna intersect the first vein within the next 20 days or so. And immediately after that, within the month of September, the second one. So basically in a matter of two months, gonna have two of those structures in this sort of development phase. On top of that, gonna be drilling intensely. You could see those two dots out of tens of dots uh, of intersect that we've planned for the next few 
few months. So Tangana again, keep an eye on that because it's going to be a lot of things coming up on there, going to be producing, going to be developing the resource, of course. As a processing facility, we've been, again, processing the ore, we've been mining over the last few few months. Actually, during COVID and in the last quarter of 2020, we were able to pretty much full or fill the plant, which is basically 600 tons a day, and we continue like that. So basically, the good news for investors is that we are a company that is producing a cash flow. Therefore, every money we invest into the company goes into creating value. We are offsetting basically almost every cost we have. Okay, so we are a self-sustainable company, and as I said, all our money or use of funds is devoted to, to growth. And that's the good news. Uh, Jose, if I can just butt in a moment there. Um, we're speaking about the Tangana mining unit here, but we're in fact also going to be spending quite a bit of time on, on the uh, Esperanza mining unit. So uh, some more information on that in the future. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's um, as we said in the beginning, right? Basically, we have two projects, north and south. The plan is centrally located. That's what we call the district scale project. So we're going to see a throughput actual increasing over the next few few years, obviously provided exploration results that we don't doubt about. But anyway, as next steps, the company, as I said, is going to actually going to ramp up production very quickly. We are almost at 600 tons a day. We actually are looking at opportunities to basically double that within the next year or so. We're going to be looking at a much bigger scenario in three to four years, which is beyond 2,000, beyond 2,500 tons a day. But more importantly, we're going to be increasing our reserves and resources. So just keep an eye on that. Again, it's going to be a very solid flow of news. And the reason why you should actually invest on silver eggs, other than what I've said, is just let's look at some compatibles, right? Within this uh, very uh, agitated, let's say, or interesting silver space at the moment, I think we are first the one junior that combines interesting exploration upside is well funded and is actually in production. A team on the ground and every element you need to create value. We are at the moment actually a market cap of a little bit about, I think, $45 million, okay, which is pretty low. It's obviously hugely undervalued. You can see that we actually have 115 million shares at the moment. And if you look at Silver X compared to our piece, we're attractive. At the moment, the market cap still has a long way to go especially when you look at competitors like what you see just on the slide, right? I don't want to mention any particular names, but we can see this growing over the next few months quite dramatically. If you actually try, so you actually draw some multiples, you can see that we have a pretty interesting resource. It's mostly inferred, okay? But we're going to have a quick conversion on that. We have more than 60 million ounces equivalent in the ground already, okay? So, and our valuation is still quite little. And if you look at valuation in terms of dollar per ounce of silver, we are about 60 cents of the dollar per ounce in the ground. Again, there's a huge potential here for re-rating, okay? Don't forget, we are gonna be producing cash flow. With cash flow, we anticipate profits. Obviously, there is a competitive advantage that we have in there. So the enterprise value per EBITDA is very modest at the moment. And we can see also a huge potential for investor there, right? So those are reasons why you should think of SilverX as an investment vehicle. Um, just some recent history of the company. As I said, it was bootstrapped initially, people on the ground. We'll be building this company bottom up. We finally listed the company. We had now a great Canadian team close to capital markets. We are well funded. Okay. So the last four years is a year is, is history of success, of hard work. And now what you're going to see in 2021 and 2022 is a very aggressive drilling program, is quick re-rating of resources, is production and good news, producing cash flow and hopefully good profits. And on top of that, the one reason why we've listed a Silver X and the X brand is something that many of you know is because we're going to be aggressive on growth, both within our district of Recuperada and elsewhere. So we're going to be pursuing M&A opportunities and hopefully you are going to see that happening within the next few months as well. That's it. And the last slide that we actually borrowed from some of our competitors is that yes, some great silver companies started in a similar fashion. And I'm talking now about Pan American Silver or why not First Majestic, right? Um, perhaps we can build the new First Majestic in South America. 
That's it. Again, we are still relaxed. Keep an eye on that. Um, we're going to be providing very good news over the next few weeks. And I think, Timothy, this is a good time for us to have Q&A. Great. Great. Thank you very much, Jose and Don, for a very informative presentation. Um, we'll now start the, the Q&A portion of, of the uh, webinar here. Uh, just a reminder, everyone on the line, you can type your questions into the chat box at any time. Uh, we already do have a, a couple of questions to start off. Um, first, uh, where is the current ore production from? Is it all from Tangana veins? Yes, it comes from the Tangana mining unit. Okay. And you recently had a press release with a bit of an update on the activities at Tangana. Um, what can you tell us about some of what you're seeing as far as new veins and, and exploration opportunities there? You go, I go. Well, I think um, we can kick off by saying that uh, we had five principal veins identified, um, which we've now expanded to 11 principal veins, which we are actually um, actively identifying for some uh, targeted exploration activity. So we're putting money into those and uh, the plan is to evaluate them. We can see a lot of, uh, a lot of information which is giving us confidence that we will get decent results, if not very good results. So we're taking it forward in that, in that manner. Great. Um, another question here. Um, there are different types of deposits in the area. Um, is the metallurgy different and what work needs to be done at the plant to handle different ore types? Uh, so far, the concentrates or they say the metallurgy has been relatively very similar actually within, within the Tangana mining unit actually encompasses both, let's say, carbonate hosted deposits or some of the veins that are actually carbonate hosted. They are good. They are not that high grade, but they are very, very, very wide, very wide veins. So it's almost, let's say, um, bodies rather than veins, right? And we've been actually doing bull sample as well over there. Um, the metallurgy is rather simple, very conventional galena and sphalerite mineralization. Same on the Tangana and the city hosted, put it that way. It also brings um, some chalcopyrite and rhodochrosite tetrahedrate. But again, in terms of the flotation process, it's very standard. Okay, We have a very standard 600 tons a day facility. It's going to be expanded to, to, to 720 within the next 60 days or so. And again, we are looking also, by the way, at some permitting going forward to be opening that umbrella in terms of the two or two and a half thousand tons a day, as long as we have the resources offices, right? Great. Do you want to mention anything about upgrading the plant as well? Yeah, the plant has been upgraded to 720. Um, basically, we already have the equipment lined up. We applied for some permitting, which is basically a 20% increase on our nameplate capacity 600 720 and beyond that again we're going to keep going i think we're going to see a number of steps in terms of throughput upgrade okay great and we do have one question and it's kind of a follow-up to to some of what you talked about obviously you had seen calcopyrite uh, there as well what is the potential for copper production To date, I'll, I'll give it to Don in terms of exploration. To date, copper is nothing but a, let's say, uh, will come in a bulk um, concentrate. So let, let's call it silver and polymetallic production for the moment. Now, in terms of exploration potential, then Donald can say. Yeah, look, it's, it's still early days. We are seeing some uh, areas in the mineralized structures where we are getting an increase in copper content. As we move through the vein field, uh, we get some areas that are lead rich, others that are more silver rich, etc. And we are opening up an area that seems to be more copper rich. So definitely something that we need to look at carefully and evaluate for the future. Okay, great. Um, and one other question here. Um, obviously, you are looking to consolidate the land package. Um, who owns the surrounding ground and what is the potential to add uh, add to your land package at Nueva Recuperada? 
We're always looking at opportunities around us. Um, we have um, some private companies around us. Some of them are in production. Some of them are just exploration of properties. We also have some majors, including Barrick Gold, with a small concession. I don't think they are doing any work. We have BHP Billiton, tech resources in the neighborhood, a few kilometers from us. But in terms of extension of the land package, I think we, we see opportunities going forward. Yes. Okay, great. And I have a couple of questions here uh, submitted that are more on the on the political and community side of things. So what is your relationship like with the, the local community? It's very good. Uh, I think we one of part of the of the success of this company uh, is that since the beginning, we work with the community hand in hand or hand by hand. Right. We, we had the need to actually do so. So the relationship was was pretty good for the last few years. I think we're building on that. We are in a mining area. So when Cabalica has been a mining district since the times of the colony, basically, um, and they understand that we're about 4,300 meters above the sea level. So this is basically one of the few activities. But more importantly, I think we are a company with a very clear vision on sustainable development. Okay, and sustainable development meaning that we're gonna look at every way possible to increase the impact we have on the on the district, right, in terms of economics. Great. Um, and then another follow-up question, obviously a bigger picture on, on politics, but what is the political situation in Peru currently uh, uh, with respect to mining? Well, so far nothing has changed. The, there is obviously a little bit of distress because it is not clear what route the, the government is gonna take over the next few months. Um, I don't think that, we don't think actually that they are going to do anything against the mining sector per se. I think the mining sector remains and will remain as the main engine of this economy. Uh, we actually account for 60% of the exports and it's basically the first um, or the main way that, that we can get uh, US dollars, so basically foreign currency. Uh, it might be the government tries to renegotiate some of the larger or some of the agreements for the larger projects, primarily copper projects in construction and things like that. But we do not anticipate any changes in regulation or taxation for companies like ours. Great. Um, and then a couple other different questions here. Um, one listener asked, please tell us some more on the geologic potential for gold. Okay, um, good question. We're finding in the Tangona veins that uh, there's actually a higher gold content than in any of the other areas. Um, and we'll be putting out some results soon that uh, will demonstrate some of that increased gold content. Um, it's erratic. It's associated with the higher grade uh, silver parts of mineralization in these structures. Um, so at this stage, still difficult to be able to really put a hand, handle on it and, uh, and define whether it's going to be something significant, but there's certainly indications of elevated gold um, in this Tangana um, mining unit, more to the, the area of the Tangana veins themselves. Okay. Great. And then, I guess, I'm not sure exactly if, if this is what the listener is referring to, but you also have the gold exploration project uh, in Peru as well, uh, further to the south. What more can you tell us about, about that project? Well, Coriorco is in the region of Ayacucho. It's a little bit south of Juan Cabelica. The Coriorco project is a low sulfidation environment. Uh, it's in, uh, in a place called the Lucanas province where there is several of these projects. So it's basically a large district with, with these kind of veins. Um, the Coriorco project actually consists on more than, I believe it's 15 to 17 veins identified. Um, when you look at the, the rock chip samples, it's always pretty good grade. We can see consistently things in between 15, 20 grams of gold. Um, the project is almost drill ready. We have an agreement with the community in place. We should be actually able to drill that in 2022 because first we focus on Nueva Recuperada as a flagship project, Coriorco comes second. And Coriorco actually has this bunch of veins with very high grades. And there's actually a dome called Las Santas, which is a potential disseminated target. We need to test that. No one is tested 
that, that system in the past, other than small miners or artisanal miners producing some gold, okay? But we need to test that system in 2022. Great. Great. And then we have a question more, I guess, on the, on the corporate side, but the insider ownership, can you provide more details on that? See, actually, management and insiders own somewhere around 35 to 40 percent of the company. OK, some of them are actually founders, including myself, including our director and VP corporate development, Sebastian Bow, and obviously some of the new management as well. So that's that's great. Obviously, we have, you know, skin in the game from the beginning. Um, so, yeah, be certain that we're going to take care of investors as we are part of them. Great. Great. And um, one other kind of question, but kind of thinking long term strategy, what is the long term strategy for the company? Obviously, to grow pr production while while doing some exploration. Um, would you look to grow through further acquisitions or is it primarily organic growth? It's going to be both going to be ambitious or aggressive on capital markets. First, we actually need to put our things in order here, increase our market cap. We're going to do very good news. Going to be an ambitious company, going to take projects, going to build them quickly, going to produce quickly. We are ambitious on exploration. You can actually feel that. Hopefully, you'll be able to feel that um, ambitious profile, right, over the next few, few months. You will see that. So we are just looking at historical projects, going to build mines, districts very quickly. That's our DNA. Great. Great. And then kind of a follow up on the on the production side. Um, obviously, production dipped. It looked like a little bit in May. But uh, how is production uh, coordinated right now? Are you able to fill the mill, I guess? And and uh, um, I guess we have do have a bulk sample coming up as well here in, in September from uh, from some of the veins. So tell us a little bit about I guess the current state of production at the at the mine. Uh, it's good actually. Just just in building a mine, we've been fluctuating in between 600 and now 450 tons a day, which is very good. Just in terms of cost, including all corporate costs, we are basically break even, which is fantastic news. Okay, um, the moment we build the mine further, we're going to be able not only to fill the plant that's that's pretty much done, but just to to increase the cut of grades to increase the value through it, right? So to so increase our performance, okay? So again, the great news is that with our cash flow, we are basically upsetting every cost we have. Now it's time to start making money uh, sooner than later. Great, great. So most of that production as well, just to, to um, qualify that statement, most of the production is coming from development of new infrastructure on the ground. We're actually opening up resources while we're doing it. So, you know, with the the added uh, increase of, of uh, budget into exploration, meaning we need uh, improved access to be able to drill ahead uh, to, to evaluate these resources, um, that those development galleries are actually placed in mineralization, and that's what's feeding the, the plant. Right. And what are the limitations to increasing production at, at the plant? Is it, um, I guess, obviously permitting is, is an important step, but what else needs to be done physically at the plant to expand production? Basically, for the step change of 600 to 720, we are going to replace some equipment, basically primary and secondary crushers. That's it. Um, and some minor, you know, kind of a couple of flotation cells, uh, it's almost done, right? We already bought equipment. Um, beyond that, obviously, there should be some refurbishment or the plant, right? So, but basically, with current plant, we are going to go to that first increase in almost no time. Okay, great. Um, and I guess, to what extent is tailings an issue there? Do you have limitations on, on tailings? Obviously, it's early in production, so you probably have plenty of capacity. But... Actually, we're now increasing our tailings dam. Um, it's actually on the way. Once we finish, within the next three to four months, we're going to have additional capacity for more than, I think, somewhere around three years. Okay, But we'll have to have different extensions or new tailings dams after that, okay? But that's on the way, that's happening. And don't forget that we have started, we'll, we'll actually release that in the next few weeks, 
but we are starting a new environmental impact assessment uh, for an overall sort of district to increase the footprint of the district, right? We are getting prepared for that. And with that, obviously, we'll have new tailings projects as well. So we're going to secure that sort of um, tailings life, if you will. Great. We do have one other question here, more on the exploration side. How many how many drill rigs are are drilling right now? And do you do you own your own rigs or do you contract them out? Right, they contracted rigs, and we have two rigs turning at the moment. The third rig is halfway up, so <laughs> and we'll have four rigs going shortly. Okay, great. And what is the turnaround time for assays currently? Obviously, that's been a big issue across the industry. But what are what times are you looking at right now? Yeah, we're doing very well. We have a really good relationship with our labs. And uh, I can't talk on the historical side of things, but at the moment, we can get our results back within 10 days. Oh, that's, oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah. Okay, great. Great. Um, yeah, so I don't see any other questions submitted quite now, but one one kind of more general question. Obviously, you're quite busy on multiple fronts, but just kind of to review, what news would we expect to have over the coming uh, weeks and months from, from SilverX? Well, those those two pictures you, you've seen, new intersects, good grades, going to see in the next few days. Right after that, very much of the same. We're going to call the initiation or the beginning of the bulk sample period in the Tangana sort of high grade veins, gonna be calling also for that sort of environmental uh, impact study over the next few weeks as well. Um, and I believe that's gonna be it, right? More of a drilling update, development update, processing update. You are gonna see the plant at full capacity. You are gonna see, we're gonna report the sales of concentrates to Trafigura on a monthly basis. And I think that's gonna be a quite solid story. I think uh, just to jump on there again, Jose, another thing that we need to look forward to is that um, we're actually in possession of a lot of really good historical data that is not 43101 compliant. Yeah. Okay. So we've actually gone through the process of educating our team. They've, um, everyone attended a QAQC course. And through the, throughout that course, we used the, the facility or the opportunity to define our fourth NI43101 compliant QA Q, Q, QC protocol. That is now being fully applied. We have all the, the standard reference materials and, and blanks, etc. all the samples that are required to have a full program of QAQC in the geochemistry side of things. So we're going back to some of those older areas where we see really good potential, but unfortunately not in a position to report it. And that'll be some of the areas we'll be focusing on to try and get those upgraded as quickly as possible inside the rather large work program that we are already dealing with. But uh, yeah, certainly information to look forward to. All right, great. Yeah, and I think if I'm not mistaken, the, the resource is entirely in the is inferred category right now. So um, I guess what work, is it is it primarily infill drilling or is it, I guess what work needs to be done to, to upgrade that? In many cases, it's drilling. Um, especially from service. So we've been waiting for our permits. Those are some of those permits we've received and there are other permits imminent. So uh, we've got that staged depending on, on how the permitting process is going and we'll be drilling to the surface as soon as we can to get better intersections. At the moment, we're restricted by underground development and that is why we're pushing underground development, getting an infrastructure in place, producing more tons out of mineralized material while we're doing that, to give ourselves opportunities, putting cross cuts, draw platforms, and punch it through the, the structure. Great, great. Um, and we do have one question here. How much should your daily production volume be by the end of this year? Well, now, as I said, we are roughly around 450, um, re-ramping up to 600 very shortly. And by the end of the year, we should actually be in the 700. Okay, that's the target. Okay, great. Overall processing throughput. Right. Okay, great. Great. All right. Um, and I guess one question I'd follow up on that. Um, obviously, there are the different kind of concessions. What is the 
timing like to to expand production or development production into the other the other areas uh, in addition to Tangana? Well, the the southern part of the district that we call Esperanza is something we are going to be looking at um, in 2022. We already started mapping and remodeling, so it's a pretty interesting system. Also, a number of veins, tens actually of veins altogether. Um, with also very good grades, including silver and, and lead and zinc. I'm going to do some drilling in the first half of 2022. That would also happen with some mine development. We'll be drifting into the system, drilling underground, doing bull sample production. And once Tangana is activated, fully activated, right, and full capacity, all our efforts will go to the south. They will have another story, a similar story. and. You know, the two of them go together again. It's a centrally located plant, and we have that sort of district footprint. Great, great. Uh, well, I, I think that's all the questions we had uh, today. Um, quite a few actually from from the audience out there. Um, so, without further ado, I'd like to to thank Jose and Don from from Silver X for presenting today. And thank you everyone out there for, for tuning in and for your, your keen interest today. Um, just a, a reminder that Red Cloud Securities will be back next Tuesday afternoon uh, when our webinar series continues with Fiore Gold presenting Tuesday, August 17th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, thank you all and, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you. Thank you, Red Cloud.